بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد تيمم using earth or dirt or dust in order to purify yourself with because the earth is pure is from the religion of Islam it is mishroor it is something which is uh, legislated or permissible in Islam and tayammum has many uh, ahkam or, or rulings pertaining to it and the scholars of Islam have deduced those rulings from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in an authentic hadith on Imran ibn Hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ra'a rajana mu'tazila lam yusallaf al-qawm faqala ya fulan ma manaka an tusallaf al-qawm qala ya Rasulullah asabtani janaba wala ma فقال عليك بصعيد فإنه يكفيك رواه بخاري. In the hadith of Imran ibn Hussein رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saw a man who was by himself uh, in the masjid, and he wasn't praying with the people. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "O oh, so and so, what is preventing you from praying with the people?" He said, "O oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I have janaba, mean I have uh, the sexual impurities upon me, and I don't have any water." So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded. He said, "Alayka bi Sa'id, then is upon you the the clean earth, for verily it is sufficient for you." And this was narrated in Bukhari. In this hadith, we see many, many benefits that the scholars deduce from this hadith. And one of the things that they mention is, of course, the mashru'iyya to tayammum. Is that tayammum is legislated in the religion of Islam. Meaning, if you do not have water, or water, or, or, some, or using water is going to harm you. Or you have only a little bit of water, which is sufficient for your drinking water, but not sufficient otherwise. You, you need it to drink. Then in these situations, you can make tayammum. Or that you have, uh, you're have you in a place where there is water, but the water is very expensive. It's a, diffi- it's a difficulty upon you to buy and purchase the water. Then in this situation, also tayammum is legislated for you. You can make tayammum instead of wudu because you don't have what's sufficient of water or the water is going to be harmful in using it. Maybe you have an injury or something uh, like this. So tayammum, also from this hadith, we learn that tayammum also goes in the place of ghusl. Meaning, so tayammum can remove the major impurities and the minor impurities. So not just for wudu, but you can make tayammum for ghusl. Meaning if you don't have water, and you have janaba from either, uh, you know, from having relations with your spouse, or whatever is caused uh, from from, uh, ejaculation or what have you, then this, akramakum Allah, then this is legislated for you to make tayammum if you don't have water, and you're in that situation. So, a person who has the major impurities, they can make tayammum if they don't have water and so forth. They should make tayammum and pray and not wait until they hopefully uh, can get water and they, they may not be able to find water if they have no water or have no access to water. Another thing we gain from this hadith is that uh that it was permissible even ijtihad 
during in issues of knowledge when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was present. That a sahaba, that this sahabi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he didn't know what to do, so he was fearful and he wanted an answer from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he he thought that the tayammum was only sufficient for removing the minor, uh, the minor uh, impurities. So when he did meet the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet sallallahu clarified for him that uh, this tayammum was sufficient in removing any of the impurities. That it was sufficient to make tayammum in order to pray. Uh, another benefit is that this hadith shows us also that if a person does gain water, if they make tayammum and they're going to make prayer, and then someone comes with water, then they need to use the water. They need to make wudu. Also, that we learn from this hadith that a person should also strive to find water. That you should not just uh, instantly make tayammum if uh, just because you don't immediately have water, but you should try to find and attain water. And then if you're unable to find any, then you make the tayammum. Those are just some of the benefits we gain from this hadith. Also, the scholars mention that also this shows us also the gentleness of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he didn't yell at the man when he saw him not praying with the people. He didn't say, "Hey, why aren't you praying?" Hey, you know, he didn't uh, attack him, but rather he asked him with gentleness. He said, "Ya fulan, ma manaka in tasallaf al qawm?" He said, "Oh, oh, so and so, why is uh, what is preventing you from from praying with the people?" So he did this with gentleness, and this is. Uh, a lesson for us in our teaching that we should be gentle with the people and make excuses for the people and look to to show them kindness especially when teaching Islamic knowledge and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil